Part one. You will hear a conversation about travel. First, you have some time to look at questions one to four. Hello, Cherry. What are you doing? I'm checking some information. Don't tell me that you are still working for next term's essay. Of course not. Our holiday is coming up. Yes. So I'm checking some tour information. Great. Let's talk about our holiday plan. Are you excited? Of course. How long will we have before we have to be back here on campus for the next term? We have three weeks holiday. Okay, so when shall we depart? What's your suggestion? Tomorrow. Oh no. Just a joking. How about next Monday? That's my father's birthday. Oh, sorry. Next Tuesday. Really? It's the eighteenth of July. Yes. Fine. What kind of transport do you prefer? Train or coach? Why don't we drive our private car? Good idea. We both have driving licenses. Maybe we'll have to spend much money on petrol fee. Come on, David. Okay. Let's talk about our routine. The first place which is nearest to our position is Manchester. Fine. I prefer to Chinatown to enjoy Chinese food. Okay. Why not? I like it too. And we can buy some cooking materials there to cook by ourselves after holiday. Are you sure you can? Maybe or maybe not. <laughs> Before you hear the rest of the conversation, you have some time to look at questions five to ten. How about other resorts in Manchester? Do you know there is a famous cathedral of the fifteenth century? No, is it a historic building? Yes, I hope to visit it. Fine. Anything else? The football pitch of the Manchester United. So great. And how about BBC? You mean the building? Yes. Why not? And then we will drive to South. Yes, the next place I prefer to is London. Oh, you are so nice! I'm looking forward to there, the Thames River. Yes, we will visit the Tower of London. It's better in the afternoon, sundown. Romantic. Yes, and London Eye. Of course, it is said that we can see a beautiful view of the Thames River. And Big Ben, which is opposite to it. Right. How about night? We can go to centre area or to Barbican foyer to appreciate an opera. I also like to visit the British Museum. Okay, me too. And the last stop? How about Brighton? That's the best choice. We can visit its local art gallery and famous beach. And seafood. Yes. Oh, where do I live? Hotel. That's so expensive. I have searched a list of B and B, which has lots of chains. You mean we can stay in the same chain B and B in different cities? Right, but we need to reserve in advance. Fine. How about the rent and deposit? Let me check. The cheapest rent of one room is fifty-five pounds per day, and the deposit is about hmm eighty pounds. Oh no, it is eighty-five pounds at least. And how about the payment? Because I book the rooms on the internet, we have to use a credit card. Okay, 
Do you need my number? Yes. Seven six five three eight one two nine three three four five nine seven o six. I got it. What should I prepare for our tour? Your video camera and good emotion. Fine. That is the end of part one. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now it turns to part two. Part two. You will hear a conversation about a new membership in a club. First, you have some time to look at questions eleven to thirteen. Good morning. Welcome to Campus Sports Centre. How can I help you? Good morning. I am a new student in Educational Studies. I'd like to inquire some information about membership. Okay. You should go to the reception on the second floor on the right of stairs. Thanks a lot. Good morning. Welcome to Campus Sports Centre. How can I help you? I'd like to register a membership card. Fine. Are you a new student? Yes, I am an overseas student from Mexico. Welcome to Bath University. Thank you. Well, for registering a new number, we need you to supply some documents. What kind of documents? One passport photo and student card and. Oh, I haven't got my student card. Oh, I am so sorry that I cannot help you apply for a new membership of Sports Centre now because we need your card number. Could you tell me the register time of Campus Sports Centre? The time is from ten o'clock in the morning to five o'clock in the afternoon on Monday to Thursday, and open until four o'clock on Friday to Sunday. Fine, I will come back tomorrow afternoon. But could you introduce some information to me now? Of course. Now look at questions fourteen to twenty. We have got a lot of sports training courses. Yes, I am interested in some courses suit for girls. Fine, we offer tennis course from four p.m. to six p.m. on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Do you have a referee? Of course, if you need. Fine. And the course place is arranged at. Let me check. At court three. Right. Do you like to do yoga? Yes, I like it very much. Do you have a yoga course? Yes, we have employed a new yoga coach from India. Really? Yes. Female or male? A young lady. Great. What's the course time? The yoga course is from three o'clock to five o'clock on Wednesday and Friday afternoons. And the place, indoor or outdoor? We arrange all yoga courses indoor. This season is in room two o one. Good. And we open a new course this season for female members. What kind of new course? Dancing course. That's so great. The course time is from six o'clock to eight o'clock in the evening on Fridays and Saturdays. Weekends. That's so great. The same place with the yoga course. No, it is in room three o three on floor three. 
How about other courses, such as swimming? I am so sorry. We do not have swimming pool, so you cannot find swimming course in our sports centre. That's okay. Another popular course in the centre on Mondays and Thursdays is kickboxing. What time is it? Still in the afternoons? Yes, from two o'clock to four o'clock. The same two hours. Right, and the place of kickboxing course is in Hall Two on the second floor beside the reception. Fine, I see. That's the main course information. If you'd like to know about other courses, please look at our booklet and get a course timetable when you register a membership. Okay. Oh, do I have to attend an assessment? Yes, we supply all new members an assessment when they register. Okay. Anything else? How much is the fee? The annual fee is thirty-five pounds, but we have a discount for new members who are going to register in this week. Really? Yes. If you register this week, the fee you need to pay is only twenty pounds. But today is Thursday. You know what I mean. Yes, I will come back tomorrow. Great. See you tomorrow. See you, and thank you very much. You're welcome. That is the end of part two. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now it turns to part three. Part three. You will hear an introduction about a library. First, you have some time to look at questions twenty-one to twenty-five. Welcome to Western Bank Library, which is the main library of the University of Sheffield. I am Chris Lee, a library staff. I'd like to give you an introduction of the library. The Western Bank Library aims to provide access to the information resources required by members of the university for research, learning, and teaching. There is a wealth of materials to support learning and research at the university. Over one million three hundred thousand printed volumes, and an extensive range of high-quality electronic resources. Many resources are accessible from off-campus via the internet. All members of the university may borrow books from the university's library. In order to borrow books. Periodicals and non-book items, you must possess a current university library U card. The U card is also your library borrower card. You will get the U card from your department, and then you should visit our website. First, to click star to register your account and get your password. Once you have borrowed items. You are solely responsible for their security and well-being until they have been removed from your account. About the number of borrowing, we offer ten books for first and second year undergraduates, fifteen books for junior and senior undergraduates, and twenty-five books for postgraduates. All books, unless requested by someone else. Can be borrowed for the following periods: part-time and distance learning taught course students can keep books for two weeks, and registered students and university staff can get four weeks. Your self-service receipt or the date label in the books 
will tell you the date when you should return the books. Please check this carefully as the items may have been requested by someone else and have a shorter loan period. Some important reference books with red colour labels cannot be taken away from the library. If you want to read them, please go to the closed reserved room on the second floor of the library. If you want to keep books for longer, you can extend the loan by renewing. There are two ways to renew. You can bring your U-card to the library counter or phone to the renewals hotline. The number is 011-422-27201. Now look at questions 26 to 30. If a book is requested by someone else, you may keep it until the due date, but you won't be able to renew it. However, if another copy of the book is returned by another person sooner, this may mean you can renew your book. It is essential you check your account regularly to ensure no one has reserved the items you have on loan. You can also use Reservation System Service to reserve the book if you cannot renew it. I do really hope you can have a habit of checking your library account every day to view and renew your loans and see details of any charges. Please note, if you have overdue books on your account, you must go to library counter to pay the fine. Otherwise, you will be blocked from borrowing any further items. Fines start from £2 to more than £50, depending on different faculty and items. The library provides a range of photocopying services and a printing service. Usually, the photocopy charge of black and white A4 sheet is £5. Colour A4 sheet is £50. You can deposit some money into your U-card because we do not accept any coins. The Western Bank Library opens at 9 o'clock in the morning and closes at 9 o'clock in the evening on Monday to Friday. At the weekends, the library opens until 6 o'clock in the evening. I'd like to remind you no snacks and noise in the library. The last, but not least, if you change your address, please inform us. The library will not be responsible if important mail goes astray, resulting in payable fines. Well, any questions? That is the end of part three. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now turns to part four. Part four. You will hear a lecture on fingerprint identification. First, you have some time to look at questions 31 to 40.
Welcome to our technology lecture. I am Professor John Stewart. Last week we talked about astronomy. Today I'd like to introduce you a lecture on fingerprint identification. Identifying fingerprints has been a vital tool in the crime fighters arsenal for more than a hundred years. According to the record, an Argentine police officer was the first one to use the method of criminal identification in 1892. He proved that a woman was guilty of murder because a bloody fingerprint at the crime scene had had to be hers. Nowadays, fingerprint forensics are about to take a huge leap forward from physical to chemical. Scientists have unveiled a new technique that can extract a lot of information. So, the physical print itself is identification, but there's a lot of information that's contained in those fingerprints. Then, what are the main functions of fingerprint identification technology? Scientists have summarized its four functions. The first one is to create an image, which is an important beginning. And then the second one is to get characteristics. And the next one is to keep information. And the last one is to contrast data. Meanwhile, some experts have pointed out that fingerprints are actually a transfer from our fingers onto an object to chemicals. Those chemicals could be things that we've handled already, or recently, or they could be secretions, oil and sweat from our bodies. We can use a technique named mass spectrometry to identify all those substances, even if they are in tiny amounts. Graham Cooks from Purdue University in the United States has explained how the technique works in his paper. As he points out, experts can get the information in a very, very simple and straightforward way using a new type of mass spectrometry. His experiment is to make a fine mist of a solvent-like water and to provide an electrical charge to those little droplets that constitute the mist and to direct that at the object, for example, a fingerprint, and then spray that in a very fine fashion with high precision as these droplets arrive. They create a thin film, liquid obviously, on top of that surface. The chemicals in the fingerprint dissolve in that liquid. Another drop arrives, splashes against the film, creates smaller droplets, and those smaller droplets are sucked up into an instrument, the mass spectrometer, then dried off and they are identified. The whole process of recording the mass spectra of a single spot on a fingerprint takes a fraction, a few tenths of a second. So the last step in the experiment then is to create the image of a fingerprint that is not to keep the spatial information but to represent only one of the chemicals. Experts could build up different layers of colors for different chemicals. And so, in the mass spectrum, it doesn't matter if experts don't have to say in advance what molecule they are looking for. They can just screen through all of this data and find out what drugs, virtually any type of organic or even biological molecule that can be seen. Maybe someone will ask if this equipment can be taken to a crime scene or can it only be used in a lab? The answer is yes. We can take the equipment to a crime scene. Actually, scientists have built a series of small mass spectrometers, the smallest of which is merely a four kilogram instrument that's hand portable. You can walk around with it and you could take it to a crime scene and do the experiment that we've been talking about. Among this chemical information of the fingerprints that our scientists have collected, we can find more information about the people themselves. Many scientists, including Graham Cooks, are more interested in this new research field. Some scientists have begun to do research on whether the distribution of compounds are the result of people's metabolism. 
As we all know, more and more people are worried about their metabolism, which is very important for people's daily life. Some other factors on the topic about whether we can find out about people's age and their sex. If we can, that will be a great contribution to medicine, law, and other fields. The third one is that some experts even study where the things in fact are going wrong in terms of people's own biology. That, of course, would be a huge project, but it is necessary to life. I really hope that if you are interested in this topic, you could join in on our research group. Of course, that is a research area that we don't have all the answers here. But we certainly have a mountain of data coming in, which should enable us to address these questions. Okay, if you want to know more information about fingerprint identification, you can read our journal online or attend a lecture uh, next Friday at the University of Bath or visit our website. Uh, the address is... That is the end of part four. You now have half a minute to check your answers.